16 years ago that England beat West Germany to win the World Cup. That under-21 triumph last night was the first trophy England have won above youth level since then. And in those 16 years, the Germans have been the most consistent football nation in the world, finishing first, second and third in different World Cups and reaching three European Championship finals. But the Wembley crowd are hoping that Bobby Robson's revised England side will now embark on a similar journey. The last stop for 21-year-old Gary Mabbott of Spurs before his full international debut was the player's entrance to pass out tickets to his many family and friends from Bristol. But for others, Wembley is just near home. Ricky Hill of Luton lives in nearby Cricklewood and wants you to sell programmes outside the ground. While Cyril Regis could see the Twin Towers of Wembley from his Wilsdon home when he played for Hayes. And one of his Southall opponents in those days was Alan Devonshire born three miles away at Park Royal. While David Armstrong's path to Wembley took rather longer, he came via Middlesbrough, Australia, where he won his first England cap, and Southampton. So, those five names figure in Bobby Robson's first home match as manager, various mishaps having ruled out Francis, Hoddle, Brian Robson, Anderson, and Koppel. West Germany have seven of their World Cup final team, None of the squad have played here before, and there are two new caps. Number three, Gert Strack, is the sweeper from Cologne. Number eight, Norbert Meyer, is a forward from Werder Bremen. But if you ask the Germans why they lost the World Cup final, they'll tell you that their captain, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, was only 60% fit and should never have started the match. Bobby Robson walking out for his first match at Wembley as England manager, and no doubt pleased to see the Union Jacks in the background. The referee is Karoli Palatai of Hungary, who many people thought should have had the World Cup final. The Germans wearing green shirts and white shorts, playing from left to right in the first half. And it'll be interesting to see how they pick up man for man, and also how the Germans play themselves in attack. This is Manny Kautz. Karl-Heinz Forster, one of the two brothers. Gets it back from Meyer. Briegel. And the goalkeeper, Schumacher, will get some reaction from the crowd after the World Cup incident involving the French player, Batiston. Although the two players have made it up and Schumacher was actually a guest at Batiston's wedding recently. None of the German players has appeared at Wembley before, but Jupp Derval, the manager, did. He made his international debut here as a player back in 1954. David Armstrong with the tackle. Referee Palatai, well known for allowing play to flow. Devonshire. Inside for Regis. This is Armstrong. Mamet has pushed on in this attack. Butcher now. Tackle from Karl Heinz Furster on Mariner. The first example of the ruthless man to man marking. Karl Heinz, the younger of the two brothers, number four, voted footballer of the year by the German journalists. Butcher is forward for the free kick on the far side. Mabbott is waiting to come in as well. Mariner made the early run. And this morning at the England training session, John Howe, the coach, was working hard on those free kicks. Mariner, the man to make the first run in, as Wilkins seizes the chance to play the ball early, and Mariner appeared to claim a corner with some justification. Wasn't given. Wilkins sliding in on Karl Heinz Furster, and that was a touch of uh, revenge there. First, it was the player who damaged Mariner a moment earlier. Wilkins went crashing into him in the middle of the field, and the Germans appear very concerned about what may have happened here. His brother Ben went rushing straight to Karl Heinz, 
when he fell. Rummenigge also calling to the bench. And Jörg Derbo has come onto the pitch to talk to Strack as though a stretcher will mean the end of Karl-Heinz Berster. I would imagine that uh, the Germans will accommodate Hieronymus into their defence, although he's played quite a lot in midfield as well. And what a blow for the German Footballer of the Year, regarded as the best man marker in Europe just at the moment, Karl Heinz Furster. So they would think now that uh, Hieronymus will take over as sweeper and Strack will go to Mark Mariner. Hieronymus is wearing 13, plays for Hamburg, and I'm afraid at the other end of the field, the very sad sight of Karl Heinz Furster being carried off, obviously badly hurt. Thompson. Strack in front of Mariner. They've met before when Ipswich played Cologne in the UFA Cup, and Strack on that occasion went off injured. Sansom. is having stitches in a gash although from the way they put the substitute on there was never any question of them waiting to see whether he would come back they seem to know how serious it was the minute he went down Mateus Samson. Butcher. England carrying the game through here. It's Butcher still on the ball. Good run by him too. Wide to David Armstrong. Mariner is coming in for the cross. He fell. Was he checked by the defender? He thought so. He appealed. Nothing given. Hieronymus. Rummenigge. Armstrong. Looks wide for Ricky Hill. Habit outside him. That's Hill into Regis. The chest off was for Wilkins. It was the ambition of Ray Wilkins' father to see him play, or rather to lead, an England team at Wembley. And how sad it is that, uh, as Ray Wilkins has this shot, his father George is not yet good enough to be here. He's been in hospital recently, but he is watching on television tonight, I gather. And uh, Ray was certainly well up with the forwards there. Well, the match in Madrid was a cagey because the teams, it was said, played each other too much respect. And it rather looks from the first 20 minutes tonight as though the Germans are, again, penalising themselves with lack of ambition in terms of the number of players they're pushing forward. But it may be early days to draw any firm conclusions about that. Regal, for one, is at least making strides to get there now. And so too is Rummenigge. Locks one in, and Kenny Sansom having to stretch. And the shot was by Bert Furster. And the defending done 
at the expense of a corner by Devonshire. Couch to take this one. Little Meyer was in there with the flick. Armstrong away. Hieronymus from Regis. Also on that side, Mateus. Got a bad ball in, and what a good save! Meyer with the header, and a brilliant save by Peter Shilton. Mateus, a superb cross, and Norbert Meyer comes in here. Unmarked, look at that, and Shilton turned it over. Here's Kaltz. Well, they say goalkeepers like making those type of saves because uh, it was straight above him, but he had to be quick because they'd left Meyer absolutely clear. Hill. Rummenigge. Armstrong. Regis. Armstrong coming in, and don't be surprised to see him in there, because an unlikely character he may be in some ways, yet he scored 15 league goals last season, and he is one of those midfield players who will get into goal-scoring positions. Proudly on display at Wembley tonight, the trophy won by the England under-21 side when they beat West Germany on aggregate in that two-leg final. Phil Thompson. Mariner. Regis trying to get in, he might. Good save, Schumacher is going to come to Ricky Hill. This goalkeeper's very, very alert coming off his line. And uh, that might bring a smile to one or two faces uh, after one incident in Spain, but he is a very competent goalkeeper. Armstrong, Mariner. And Hieronymus is the defender dwelling a bit. And was he pushed by Devonshire? So, ten minutes to go in the first half here at Wembley in this friendly international. England nil, West Germany nil. England have had more of the game, but West Germany had perhaps the best clear opportunity when Meyer's header was tipped over. And that's a very poor kick by Schumacher. So, Butcher will look for the knock-on again at the near post. Oh, a bit of elbows in there. Armstrong. Turned it in nicely. Mabbott shot! So close to a goal in his first international at this level. Rummenigge. Mabbott struck that absolutely instantly. As the ball came out of a crowded penalty area, Schumacher to his left and off the post. And reminders of the match in the World Cup in Madrid, which ended in a nil-nil draw, because that's the position at half-time at Wembley tonight. But Jupp Derval's plans, certainly upset by the early injury to his centre-back, Karl-Heinz Berster, who is now in a nearby hospital, 
with what the Germans are calling a serious calf muscle injury and over 20 stitches in a gash in his leg after a collision with Ray Wilkins. Gary Mabbott had England's best shot, which hit the post. The Germans had a couple of opportunities, but at half-time, no score. Germans tonight are aiming to become the first nation from overseas. First foreign team ever to win at Wembley twice. But England had more shots in the first half, and here's Devonshire checked on the edge of the area. It was just outside, I fancy, by Bent first up. England in the first half had 11 goal attempts to Germany's four. And there could be one coming up here from the free kick. corner and up goes Butcher mistake by Schumacher well, how they survived there, I don't think they're even sure. Armstrong. And it's still dangerous as Mariner comes in. And Mabbott pokes it back, and Ricky Hill couldn't control it. Schumacher's twice been very fortunate, and the ball has been skidding across an unguarded goal mouth. Armstrong. Mateus. Oh, Armstrong. He won it, he shot, he got it back. He found Ricky Hill. Determination there by David Armstrong. And indeed by an England team in general. Good advantage played by the referee there. Wilkins across to Mabbott. Into Hill. Back to Regis. fortunate in that opening England attack. Jupp Derval's West Germans have only been beaten once by a European nation in the last four years, and that was by Italy in the World Cup final. Butcher. Marin is making a run down the left. Checked a bit now. As England bring Thompson forward. Devonshire who crossed from left to right. Oh, it was nicely done. This is Wilkins with the cross. Regis far post. Hill. Good save by Schumacher. From Ricky Hill. Ray Wilkins with the chip ball to the far post. Regis the header back. Hill the flying header. Schumacher the flying save. Made it look very spectacular. He comes out to meet Butcher, and it's going to come down to Wilkins. And the Germans breaking ominously here. Rummenigge's got Kaltz forward and Arlofs. Actually, they haven't made the most of those quick thrusts, the Germans, and England are back on the attack now. Devonshire to Mariner. Thompson. Wilkins. Devonshire pulling wide now. Away by Strack. Then it was Meyer. Foul by Phil Thompson. So a bubbling opening ten minutes here in the second half. football but not always popular with the crowd Arlo. 
Cross. Oh, it's a good ball. Rubenegger. Oh. Memories of Madrid in a way there when he was quiet for so long and then thundered a shot against Chilton's crossbar. Well, on that occasion, it was a good ball through. And Rummenigge, probably speaking with his record behind him, Arloff's pass, Rummenigge will no doubt feel he should have scored. Chilton perhaps takes credit for closing down the angle. And there's no doubt now the Germans are breaking swiftly and intelligently from deep positions and starting to examine the England defence. They're struck. <laughs> Briegel looks up to see Rummenigge making another one of those runs. Two defenders this time. Butcher and Sansom possibly in each other's way, but the idea being to keep Rummenigge out. Here's Strack. Let it go to Arloff's, and that took a deflection. Corner to West Germany. Peter Shorten winning his 44th cap tonight, and as always, hoping for a clean sheet, but the Germans are having a good 10 minutes here. Arloff's with the corner. And Strack was up, but so was Butcher. Bobby Robson pensive. easy for Shorten. It's Dremler picking up the loose ball. Kaltz. And again, that's nicely played. And so is that. Oh, and Armstrong's pass went wrong. Rummenigge. Side netting, but Shorten got a hand to it. And what an important save it was. Unfortunate for Armstrong, the back pass here ricochets and as it does so against his own player Rummenigge is in from a well not too bad an angle Shorten a good save and Briegel came in round the back So, the West Germans preparing to make their second substitution. The referee hasn't yet spotted that. Rummenigge. From the corner to West Germany. the substitution can be made. Pierre Litvarski, who will replace Meyer. Litvarski, who scored a hat-trick in that under-21 final second leg only last night in Bremen. So he comes on 24 hours later for the senior side. Just over 20 minutes left. And it's a corner to the Germans. And a header out by Regis as far as Dremler. The 
and substitutes warming up. Set through to Litvarski and now Rummenigge. That's easily done by him. Rummenigge, the scorer for West Germany. Jupp Derval applauds. Litvarski, who's just come on, plays a part in the goal. Coming 17 minutes from the end, Rummenigge, who'd been lying in wait for an opportunity like this, Litvarski is the player there who touches the ball back to him, away from two England defenders, and that finish absolutely clinical. England nil, West Germany won, 73 minutes. Wilkins. Well, it was on the cards because the West Germans had had a very good spell indeed, having Rummenigge checking the time, but just see here how coolly he takes it, pulling away from the defence. Chilton does all the right things, perhaps, but Rummenigge waits for him to commit himself and jabs the ball over it. Hill. Foul. Same player as before. That should be a booking for Wolfgang Dremler. He's done that twice now, yellow card, still in use in Europe, the yellow card. Shown to number six, Dremler. And you can uh, see why. Well, here we are, look at this. Graham Ricks, Tony Woodcock and Luther Blissett. And off goes Paul Mariner, off goes David Armstrong, and off goes Cyril Regis. Well, I haven't seen that happen before. Three at once. Bobby Robson then deciding that a wholesale change is what was called for. And it's got the crowd going again. Rummenigge. Here's Litvaski. works again for the Germans. Derval's team go two in front. It's the near post ball. Rummenigge sticking out of foot as he slid in there. And 2-0 to the Germans. Let's just see it from behind the goal. Litvarski with the cross. Rummenigge just getting his foot in front of the defender. And so, despite making their triple substitution, England almost immediately go two goals behind. Terry Butcher tried awfully hard to get to Rummenigge there. But that near post ball, as Bobby Robson well knows, is a West German speciality. So it looks as though England's run of 13 unbeaten matches is coming to an end here. Listen. into the far post, there's a chance there. Oh, Gary Mallett was in there again. What a good effort. So, so close. And Butch is on the near post, turned back, and driven into the net by Tony Woodcock. 
consolation at least for Bobby Robson's team as Tony Woodcock once at Cologne scores against the Germans. From the corner, Terry Butcher's presence on the near post again important. He held the ball on, Woodcock turned and thrashed that into the top corner. So this has developed now into a very exciting international being played in pelting rain. The score, England 1, West Germany 2. And there are five minutes to go. The crowd is 68,000. They've paid £416,000 to watch the match. Just a reminder that Armstrong, Mariner and Regis were the three players who left the field in that triple substitution of England's. So the two wide men, Devonshire and Hill, are still on. And so is Mabbott. Bobby Robson managing a smile. Germans just knowing enough, though, in that situation. Stefan Engels there of uh, Cologne going off and being replaced by, or rather, Engels coming on, I should say, and uh, the man who's gone off is number nine, Arlofs. Woodcock. England force a corner. Rousing finish. Devonshire takes, plays it back to Kenny Sampson, whose control let him down. Still found Wilkins. And the referee blows to signal a West German victory by two goals to one, and they become the first team to, from an overseas nation to win at Wembley twice, thanks to Rummenigge in the main. England's run of 13 games without defeat ends despite a late revival in which Tony Woodcock scored. A bright second half. The Germans playing some very good stuff to go to up. England showing good speed.